Greetings, physicists. Uh, it's Mr. Gopal here, uh, here for a lesson that uh, stands at the intersection of physics and chemistry in a very interesting way and relates to some of the recent videos that I've made. Specifically, it's in the modern physics unit and uh, it's about the hydrogen spectrum. And the focus question is how can we calculate the energy in electron volts of electron transitions? Now, the reason why this uh, has to do with both um, physics and chemistry is we are gonna tra track energy in a way that relates to the way that we've been tracking energy in physics. However, we're gonna look at subatomic particles and energy levels in the atom in a way that we did in chemistry. Um, so the basic idea is that every element has an emission spectrum, all right? And uh, so that means that hydrogen has one, helium has a different one, they're both unique and different. Sodium has its own unique and different one as does calcium and chlorine and so on and so forth, all right? And this spectrum is of emitted light, okay? Uh, and the reason that we can see this light is through applying some sort of energy to an element's atoms uh, in a way that excites its electrons, causing them to move to an unstable state. So I'm gonna take you through a bit of that. Uh, so first of all, here's a quick picture of uh, some of these unique, I guess, spectra for different elements. We can get sodium, uh, hydrogen, calcium, mercury. Um, and now all these unique spectra are related to the unique electron configurations, which affect the way that electrons get excited in all of these elements, what would happen, all right? And so when they get excited, uh, this is, a, this is a trip back into chemistry. Um, when they're not excited, we say they're in the ground state and that is their most stable state. However, we can excite elect an electron further out from its ground state. Um, and as a result, uh, eventually it will have to come back down to its ground state. The reason why is because um, it's unstable in that state and it doesn't possess the energy to permanently stay in an unstable state with the attractive force of the nucleus being what it is, okay? So we temporarily excite it by applying energy. That energy is absorbed, causing it to jump to an excited state. And now when it comes back down, it releases that energy in the form of the light that we see here, okay? So that is the crucial understanding that you need to, to track why we're calculating this, why we calculate these electron volt values, uh, because they correspond to, um, to the amount of energy emitted uh, and the, the color of the, uh, the spectra emitted by a particular element when it goes back down from excited to a ground state. So we are gonna take a look at the, at the reference table as well, all right? So they have a series of um, energy levels for, for hydrogen. And as you can see, uh, in the ground state, it has the least amount of energy uh, up to an infinite energy level. It gets to a state of zero energy. However, it has successively less and less. So we have to add in like to us minuscule amounts of energy, but it's a lot of energy for an atom to handle in order for an electron to jump to energy levels two, three, four, five, or six. Okay, so you can see we start at negative 13.6. Uh, there's a major leap to energy level two, it takes a lot of energy uh, because in energy level two, um, that is at the discrete quantity, negative 3.4. And then once again, there's a pretty big jump, but the jumps get smaller and smaller. They're almost like halved what they were before, okay? It, with each successive jump. Uh, actually even more than that, because this is about 10 electron volts, all right? And then this is about uh, almost two. Not even, right? Uh, so uh, the amount of energy needed to go up successive levels diminishes significantly, uh, and we need to be able to track it. So if we look at this, um, we have a simple calculation to do. And this is also in the reference table. If we want to figure out how much energy it takes to transition from energy level four to one, first of all, we need to understand that we're making a calculation based on whether energy is emitted or absorbed. 
And the way that we do that is by subtracting the initial state minus the final state. Now, this is important to be very careful about because um, in most of our physics calculations, we take the final state of something, say the velocity, um, and uh, we subtract it from the initial velocity, right? In this case, this is the first case where we have to do the initial amount of energy minus the final amount of energy to get the energy of the photon, okay? And you can see that that works perfectly. For example, in their example, if we're at energy level four, we go down to one, we are subtracting in the direction of negative 0 0.85 minus negative 13.6, uh, the minus and minus turns into a plus of positive. I'm just going to get my stylus out here. Plus positive. Hence, we get positive 12.75. So the thing to take note of is that when energy emitted, Travel from higher to lower, and P of the photon is positive. Okay, on the other hand, as we'll see, when electron volts are absorbed, travel or an electron travels lower to higher, and the energy of a photon is, oops, photon is negative, all right? And you'll see that as well. So let's just try a handful of these, all right? We will take a quick look at this longer question and I'll talk about setting it up uh, and that will be this video. So quickly, if we're going from four to three again, I start at four, that would be negative 0 0.85. And now if I'm subtracting three, that's minus negative 1.51, okay. And I'll remind you that that is plus positive. So in other words, I'm doing 1.51 minus 0.85, okay, which is gonna be 0 0.66. Now we'll try one more with you. Let's do three to one. Change colors. Again, starting at three, that means I'm starting at negative 1.51. Choose, uh, I'm actually gonna use red, that's the best. Minus negative 13.6. All right, that is the same as plus positive. And I could rearrange it and say that's the same as saying 13.6 minus 1.51. And that's gonna be 12.09. See if you can test yourself and calculate the last three rows. So, um, oh, and again, if we wanted to connect the letters with the arrows, I'm looking over here at the corresponding letters between specific jumps between specific energy levels. So, if I'm doing four to one, that is associated with A. And the way I can tell is because I start at four here and I get down to one here in A. All right, four to three, as we can see, would be B. And the one that we just calculated, which is three to one, well, that's gonna be C. Okay. See if you can count, challenge yourself to calculate the remaining ones. I'm gonna clear this. And now let's talk about this longer problem. Okay. Now they've put in a deliciously challenging problem here. Um, we want to figure out the electron transition that's responsible for the red color. Now, converting 
nanometers into meters. I'm not going to do it, but I am going to remind you that uh, one meter is equal to 10 to the positive ninth nanometers. All right. So for converting that, we need to have that conversion factor at the ready. How would we use that conversion factor? Let's assume that we were successfully able to convert it into meters. We do have to remind ourselves of some equations from other units. So specifically, we have to take the wave equation, velocity equals frequency times wavelength, all right? Uh, now, the other clue that I'm gonna give here uh, they tell us, or they remind us that the speed of light, which we're tracking in this case, is three times 10 to the eighth meters per second, okay? The thing that I wanna add on to that is that um, we also know the wavelength of a red light, okay? So after we've converted this into meters, we can go to the reference table and we can check and see the wavelength that corresponds. I'm sorry, that's a mistake on my part. Uh, we've already calculated it, I apologize. This is it. We, once we convert it into meters, we have the wavelength of this red light. I apologize. So we have that, we can plug that in for lambda, all right? Uh, we can plug in our speed of light. We just have to rearrange this equation. If we have V equals frequency times lambda, how do I solve this equation for frequency? What do I have to do? Think about that to isolate frequency. Now, this equation is on the same page as our um, energy level diagram uh, for hydrogen. So if I go, apologize. I know it's, it's, uh, it's on the page after us. two pages after, so it's on page five. All right, uh, the energy of a photon can also be expressed as H times F where H is Planck's constant. Very helpfully, they have put Planck's constant in here. Uh, so now that we have frequency, we can plug into this equation, we can multiply by Planck's constant and we will have the amount of energy for that light. And now finally, we can convert from joules to electron volts, all right? Uh, if you recall, one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th joules, otherwise known as a coulomb. This is from the electricity unit. And now we can find the energy of that particular um, red emission spectrum uh, in electron volts. So it's kind of a fun problem. I gave some hints as to how to do it. And I hope this is a helpful review of what it means to calculate the emission spectrum of various elements, why it's kind of cool that each element has its own, it's almost like its own unique barcode or something like that. Uh, and finally, where to find important information on the reference table and make calculations uh, about the energy of a photon. So I hope this is helpful and I hope to see you soon. Take care.